Hello, welcome back, friends. Uh, we are discussing the unit number four of paper aquaculture. So today we are discussing the edible oyster culture and mussel culture. Okay, this is the unit number fourth. So edible oyster culture is one of the most accepted and popular marine culture technologies because this oyster is used for the eating purpose that's why they are called edible oyster so there are there are about six different species distributed along the indian coast and among these the indian backwater oyster crassotria madrasensis is the candidate species suitable for culture so the oyster culture should be should be done by the following protocols the protocol is there for the culturing these edible oyster so number one and very important protocol is the site selection so whatever the site is selected for this edible oyster culture that should be a uh, good and it should be open sea and estuarine areas where the salinity does not drop below 15 percent are suitable for oyster culture it means the oyster they 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 have or they should uh, between uh, 15 to 32 percent salinity they have the range of this particular salinity so it should be remember that when you select the site at that time the salinity there in a particular site it does not drop below 15 percent okay and that site is suitable for the oyster culture along with this salinity some other parameters are also important and it should be checked before the selecting the site number one just discuss the salinity it should be 15 to 32 percent then the most important and very important uh, parameter is the pH that is the hydrogen ion concentration so the uh, oyster they uh, need you know uh, some alkaline water alkaline nature so the pH from uh, 7 to 8.5 should be good for the uh, growth of this oyster then the very important uh, parameter important characteristics is the dissolved oxygen so dissolved oxygen is uh, greater than 3.5 gram per liter should be there uh, if you select any site so that should be remember the do then the high plankton production is necessary for that site means uh, the oyster they need food and the natural food is in the form of planktons they prefer the planktons in their diet so that there should be a high plankton production and again the low silt load is there okay at that side so you should remember then the, again the moderate water current and the number one number four and very important criteria when we select the site is the market means where we select the site so it should be nearer to the market so whatever the production is there that production is uh, you can easily sell into the market okay now the farm structure the farm structure used for this oyster culture is decided depending on the depth at the site just i have discussed that the depth is very important so it this structure of this farm is depend on or used for the oyster culture is depend on the depth of the site and the how the sea is calm okay the calmness of the sea i'll say very important so there are three types of farm structures racks then the long lines and rafts are used for this oyster culture these three types of farm are usually according to the depth of the sea okay but the depth according to the depth these farms they are selected okay so the racks are suitable for the issues and shallow seas okay means this where there is a shallow seas and issues that place you can use this racks farm whereas in long lines and the rafts they are used for the deeper area I means the deep sea you can see we can use these two farms in the deep sea also okay so the racks the racks are the constructed using bamboo poles okay the, it, it is easily available it is easily available by the people so the racks are constructed using the bamboo poles which are driven into the bottom at one to two meter 
apart and are connected with horizontal poles in a such a way that they are above the water even there is a high tide okay means if there is a high tide at that time they should or they remain over above the water level okay so the long lines made up of synthetic rope of 16 to 20 mm diameter as the main line and rafts made up of wood are supported by floats and anchored in position at either ends using the concrete blocks or the anchors so see here this is the some uh, uh, they are supported some uh, by floats so you can use this uh, number of float okay plus some concrete block either used by some concrete block or we can use the iron anchors that are usually available in the market okay now the nursery reading spat how the spat they are nursed so the nursery reading of spat is relevant only when the seed is procured from the hatchery if we select or if we brought the seed from the hatchery at that time the nursery reading of spat is relevant otherwise there is no need to uh, nurse there them okay as why because as the oyster spat taken out of the hatchery are too small okay if we brought these uh, spat from the hatcheries so at that time the spat they are really too small and they, they they need protection for growing in the field that's why uh, before the stocking in the farm they should nurse okay and for nursery rearing relatively calm waters with adequate flow to bring phytoplankton or preferred okay so you should remember that uh, one uh, though two thing is very important one is calm water plus the phytoplanktons okay then the growth culture how we grow the uh, oyster so the grow out culture of oyster is carried out principally by two methods that is rack and rain method and rack and tray method so in rack and rain method the shell or the string or the rains with the spat are suspended from racks and the rains are grown for a period of 5 to 8 months when they become ready for the harvest okay so see this is the uh, rack in a rack and tray method okay so see here in a rack and tray method the nursery rearing single spat we can say the clutch free measuring about 25 mm are transferred to tray size 14 to 40 to 10 cm at a density of 150 to 200 seeds oyster per tray in a single tray we can uh, store the 150 to 200 seed okay and the tray is knitted with a 2 mm synthetic twines you can see in this picture twines uh, twine of the appropriate mesh and suspended from rack once the oyster reached 50 mm length and they are segregated and transferred to tray size 90 60 to 50 cm okay now after this grow out see here the harvesting harvesting is very important so harvesting is done when the oysters are plump condition and it should be done before the spawning because after spawning the meat will be very thin so remember that we are culture these oysters for the eating purpose so you should remember that these these oysters should harvest before the spawning because after spawning the meat will be thin and there is no use or the, the, the demand of this particular we can say the meat is not there if this thin is there the thin meat is there so they attain 11 centimeter size in one year okay now the this is the uh, edible oyster culture we can culture this edible oyster uh, in the in a such a way that for the eating purpose and number of places in our area plus in the world the number of peoples the uh, they uh, used in their diet so it is also very important uh, as far as the eating uh, as far as the eating purpose plus employment also it generate also employment okay now the next is the muscle culture same we have just uh, discussed the uh, edible oyster culture and the pearl oyster culture so number three is the muscle culture so the freshwater pearl 
forming by valves occurring in India belong to genera Lamellinus and Pericea. So the Lamellinus marginalis and the Lamellinus corinus and Pericea are the important freshwater pearl mussel in India. Wherever you go in India, you got these two species, Lamellinus marginalis and the Lamellinus corinus easily. Okay, and these are the we can say the two major or three the Pericea also three major species. Uh, for the freshwater pearl. Okay, then the Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, that is CIFA, which was which is uh, situated in Bhubaneswar, has developed and standardized the technology for the induction of pearl formation in the common freshwater mussel. Let us call the Libellinus marginalis. In the pearl culture experiment, induction of the pearl formation is carried out by. See, this is the steps. Implement, uh, implantation of the nucleus in the space between the shell and mantle, then the implantation of the craft tissue and the nucleus in the mantle tissue, then the C1, it's implantation of this graft tissue and the nucleus in the gonad tissue, then the shell beds are commonly used as the nucleus for the formation of the pearl. So see, the muscles measuring 10 cm and above from the natural habitats are used for the induction of pearl formation experiments. So these, uh, you can easily got these uh, <coughs> muscles in the natural habitats, in, in a river, in pond, in a reservoir. So you can just collect these 10, 10, uh, 10 centimeter and above uh, muscle for this uh, pearl formation experiment and nucleus around with the craft tissue is implanted carefully in the tissues of the recipient muscle. So, when we select any muscle, so these nucleus and along with the graft tissue is implanted carefully in the tissue of this recipient muscle and these implanted muscles are cultured in the natural habitats in cages specially erected for them. Okay, And these muscles are grown for a period of 3 years during which period the muscles grow and the pearl also into this in size. We have just, we have just discussed uh, in our previous lecture the pearl culture. So same here, we have to grow these muscles for up to 3 years for the good quality pearl. Okay, and after harvesting the muscles, the pearls are collected, cleaned, graded and marketed. Okay, whatever the, uh, after the harvesting of the muscle, after three years or after three and a uh, half years, these muscles they are harvested, then the, the pearl is formed inside the uh, muscle, they are collected, that pearl is cleaned, then grayed, size according to their size, according to the shape, and after that they are marketed. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, in uh, Hyderabad, we have uh, very good market for the pearl near nearby the uh, Charminar. Okay, so if we have, uh, if from you anyone visited to the Hyderabad or in our surrounding to the Charminar, you just you can enjoy, you can um, saw the market of this, uh, see the market of the pearl. Okay, so the gonadal insertion method for induction of the pearl is known to yield well formed round large size pearls. So, so this is the uh, flow diagram of this pearl culture technology, how we, we can uh, culture the pearl. So pearl culture technology is broadly divided into different six steps. First one is the collection of muscle. Collect the muscle from the natural habitat. Okay. Before the uh, experiment we have to keep uh, these muscles into our, uh, in a uh, lab okay. for a few days for acclimatization and after that the second step is the pre-operative condition then the muscle surgery then post-operative care and pond culture of implanted muscles and last one is the harvesting of muscle and pearls. So see here the collection of muscles. So if these muscles usually lie partially buried in the sand or mud in shallow marginal areas of the stagnant to slow flowing habitats like ponds, tanks lakes and reservoirs. I have just already told you that these uh, libelous marginalists are easily available in uh, any water body in our area. 
so you can easily uh, available in ponds tanks lakes and reservoirs and healthy mussels are collected manually and kept in a containers with tap water the ideal mussel size used for the pole culture is over 8 cm above an 8 cm size is preferable for the pole culture then the next is the pre operative condition so the mussels whatever the we have, select, we have uh, collected from the natural habitat they are kept in a aged tap water in crowded conditions at a stocking density of one mussel per one for two to three days and this pre operative conditions uh, conditioning help in a relaxation of adductor muscles which help for easy handling during the surgery then the third point or third step is the muscle surgery for the surgical implantation the required material is the special design surgical kits we have to use the surgical kits and that surgical kit is Uh, specially designed only for the uh, surgical implantations okay so uh, then the nuclear beds of various size and shape and the muscle species to be implanted okay so the nuclear materials are made from hard molluscal shell then the bed made from muscle shell powder or the egg shell powder blended with a stable adhesive or the skeleton uh, skeleton materials are also found to be ideal nuclear material producing gem quality pearls okay this so see this is there are three types of surgical operation techniques such as mantle cavity see then the mantle tissue and gonadal implantation so are the forward depending on the type of pearl to be produced means which type of uh, pearl you have to produce so see here the implantation techniques mantle cavity this is the insertion then the mantle tissue implantation gonadal implantation so mantle cavity insertion it protects the design pearls then the half rounded pearls when these mantle cavity insertion we have uh, found the uh, product uh, pearl is designed for and there is no uh, shape it means you can say the half rounded pearls is formed in this mantle cavity insertion whereas the mantle tissue Uh, this uh, non nucleated and nucleated when uh, in non nucleated uh, implantation the unattached irregular small pores are formed whereas a nucleated implantation the small and rounded pores are formed and if we implant uh, gonadal implant is there so the product their unattached round pores uh, is found okay then the mantle cavity insertion so the mantle cavity is implantation is the simplest technique the products are generally shell attached half round or design pearls depending upon the shape of the nucleus implanted so the shells are carefully opened by means of a speculum up to the maximum of 1 cm wide without causing injury to the adductor muscles and soft parts of the muscle so you have to you have to clean or when you open the uh, shell of the muscle you, you should you should take a care okay and a small area of upper uh, shell wall and nucleus of desired size and shape up to the 1 cm in size is inserted slowly into the mantle cavity and further push deep okay this is the mantle cavity very simple technique then the mantle tissue implantation the mantle tissue implantation involves placement of graft along along or along with a small nuclear bed in the pocket made in the mantle of a recipient muscle so the graft is prepared from a healthy and larger donor muscle in a similar way as discussed in a we have discussed the pearl oyster okay and while only graft tissue is inserted into the mantle pockets in the non nucleated method the nucleated method involves insertion of graft followed by a small beds of less than 2 mm diameter okay and the insertion of graft or nucleus must be done with utmost care so as to prevent rupturing the mantle pockets okay you have to uh, just remember that you should take more care at that time insertion of this uh, or implantation if with the um, 
mental pockets get ruptured then there is no uh, the the problem is there okay so you have to take more care then the next is the uh, gonadal implantation uh, after gonadal implantation uh, after the um, mental tissue implantation so the grafts are prepared from the donor muscle as stated earlier and the recipient muscles are carefully opened in a 1 cm wide with a shell opener and position on the clamp of the operating stand okay so the labial part and the gills of the clamp recipient muscles are generally pushed up with a spatula and the operating gonads area is exposed a small incision is made by a specially designed knife along the outer membrane of the gonad for the inserting the graft and nucleus okay so these are the techniques then post operative care after op uh, surgery so the implanted muscles are placed immediately after surgery in a special made nylon bags at the uh, we can say two numbers per bag in a single bag we can uh place two muscle okay with a ventral side of uh, a position which are subsequently suspended 0.2 meter depth in a post operation care used for period of 10 days we have to uh, take care for the 10 days after the surgery so the ferro cement or the frp tanks filled with aged tap water used for this purpose and in post operative care unit treatment of water should be implemented by using spectra antibiotic then the chloroquinol at the rate of 2 uh, 1 to 2 ppm as a prophylactic uh, measures is beneficial for the survival and wound healing of the implanted muscle if there is a uh, wound uh, uh, during the surgery uh, so because of these uh, some antibiotic some uh, treatment it should be healed okay it, it is healed by these treatment okay and it is desirable to add green water that is green water means the <coughs> algae enriched water it contains more algae so into these unit after 3 to 4 days and the units are examined daily for removal of the dead muscles if we are uh, if we found any dead muscle in the particular units then you should remove the uh, muscle dead muscle okay quickly now the pond culture after post operative care the nylon bags containing implanted muscles are hang at 1 uh, meter depth from bamboo or the pvc pipes placed in a ponds the muscles can also be kept in a perforated plastic crates also and the muscles are cultured at the rate of 5000 per acre since muscles are filter feeders the ponds are fertilized with organic and inorganic fertilizers periodically to sustain the plankton productivity means they their natural food is plankton so we have to remember that we have to uh, the where we have select the pond for the culture of these <coughs> muscle at the same pond we have to uh, at the same pond the fertilization is very important and along with the organic we can also use the inorganic fertilizers for the more production of plankton because they are filter feeders and they are mostly feeds on the plankton okay so periodical checking of muscles with removal of dead ones and cleaning of bags is required throughout the culture period so if we culture these muscles for near about 2 to 3 ma 3 years or up to 2 years or 2 3 years so checking or the uh, we can say the management or the observation is very important so we have to observe we have to periodically checking of muscles with the removal of if we have found any dead muscles inside the bag so we have to remove the uh, dead muscles quickly okay and these activities should be done throughout the culture period okay and last and very important criteria in this uh, muscle culture is the harvesting so muscles are harvested after a culture period of usually 12 to, uh, to 18 months but in a uh, we can say the uh, near about 3 uh, years up to 3 years a good quality pearl is formed so we have 
remember that after, uh, in some uh, muscles uh, they uh, produce 12, uh, in between 12 to 18 months when some pulse they produce uh, up to 3 years okay so while pulse can be removed from the mantle tissue or gonads of the live muscles the muscles are sacrificed in a case of mantle cavity method so if we have uh, insert the uh, in the simple method is called mantle cavity method so we have to sacrifice the muscle okay and the harvested pearls then are cleaned and further processed before the marketing you have to collect the pearl after harvesting and they are they should clean with water then again some processing is there after some process they uh, sell they are ready to sell into the market okay so you can just see this picture this is the surgical or surgery tools kit for indian ships so this is the muscle we can see this picture the number of pearl is formed okay in this muscle okay in this here okay three lines here three lines here so this is the stand this is the uh, knife okay by using these uh, type of surgical tools or surgical kit we can uh, easily implant the tissue uh, into the muscle and after uh, the period of uh, culturing we have a good quality pearls in the from the muscle okay so this is nothing but the uh, uh, muscle uh, sorry the inibolizer culture and muscle culture okay till then friends uh, this is the fourth unit part so remaining part is uh, discussed in the next lecture so till then goodbye and uh, again one more uh, request to all the students that if you have any query about any lecture we have so please uh, drop your question in our youtube channel so we can uh, discuss in the uh, discussion section also okay so thank you thank you very much